ever be able to forgive himself. Therefore, our beloved Prophet said, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's mentioned in Ibn Majah, volume number three, in the book of Intoxicants, chapter number 30, hadith number 3392, that anything which intoxicates you in large quantity is even prohibited in a small quantity. No excuse for nipot at all. Our beloved Prophet said, it's mentioned in Ibn Majah, volume number three, in the book of Intoxicants, chapter number 30, hadith number 3371, that intoxicants are the mother of all evils. It is the mother of all evils. Because of intoxication, we have so much of evil in society. Molestation, rape, disease, etc. several. And the Prophet said, the 10 categories of people are cursed, those who are involved with alcohol. It's mentioned in Ibn Majah, poem number three, in the book of Intoxicants, chapter number 30, hadith number 3380. And the Prophet said, anyone who's involved in 10 categories with alcohol, Allah's curse is on such people. Those that distill alcohol, those who distill it for others, those who drink it, those who transport it, those who transport it for somebody else, those who serve it, those who sell it, those who utilize the profits of the sales, those who buy it, and those who buy it for someone else. All these 10 types of people, Allah's curse is on these people. And there are several diseases which a person can have by having intoxicants. You can give a talk only, only on the ill effects of alcohol, which the Western world knows about it. Not that they don't know. Therefore, they have several resolutions passed, which I shall discuss one later on. And you can give a talk only listing the names of diseases will take you a full day. I'll just mention a few. One of the most dangerous diseases, which is associated with the person drinking alcohol, is cirrhosis of liver. Having intoxicants, a person can also have carcinoma of the esophagus, carcinoma of the head and neck, carcinoma of the stomach, carcinoma of the liver. A person can have esophagitis, gastritis, pancreatitis, hepatitis. He can have cardiomyopathy. He can have angina. He can have hypertension. He can have atherosclerosis. All these are associated with having alcohol. A person can have peripheral neuropathy, cortical atrophy, cerebral atrophy, if he has alcohol. A person can be associated with strokes, with fits, with paralysis, with apoplexy. A person can have Wernicke-Kosko syndrome, which is a syndrome associated with loss of immediate memory and confabulation and retention of past memory due to thiamine deficiency, which is associated with intake of alcohol. A person can also have disease like pellagra, beriberi. He can have delirium tremens. It takes place a lot of time post-operatively and infection, and especially a person who abstains from intoxicants. And if a person is suffering from this, even in advanced hospitals, sometimes he can die. He can have several endocrine disorders, such as mixed edema, hypothyroidism, Cushing syndrome. He can have hematological disorders, like Zene syndrome. He can have folic acid deficiency in which there is microcytic anemia. He can have platelet disorders, thrombocytopenia. Common drugs which a person takes, like flagyl, that is metronidazole, can come in between if he regularly takes alcohol. If a person takes alcohol regularly, his power to fight the diseases, his immunity goes down. There are chances of infection of the respiratory tract. There can be diseases of the lung like emphysema, like pulmonary tuberculosis, like lung abscess. And when a person vomits, his cough reflex is reduced during intoxicant, and the vomitus can go into the lung, causing lung abscess as well as emphysema. A person can even die due to this problem. And this problem of intoxicants, of alcohol, is further multiplied in the woman. A woman has more chances of cirrhosis of liver as compared to the man. And if a woman is pregnant, and if she takes alcohol, there are chances of having alcohol fetal syndrome. It even affects the baby. There are several diseases. There can be skin disease, like alopecia, eczema, paronychia, stomatitis. Several diseases. You can only list the diseases for days together and discuss for months together. But today's doctors, the Westerners, they tell us in the medical journals that alcoholism is a disease. It's a disease. It's not addiction. You know, like how you have typhoid, you have pulmonary tuberculosis, and normally people are sympathetic towards people who have disease. If a person is sick, you are sympathetic. If 
poor person. He has got typhoid, he has got influenza, he's suffering from illness. So today's doctors tell us that alcoholism is a disease. So I tell them, if alcoholism is a disease, it is the only disease that is sold in bottles. <laughs> it's the only disease that has a licensed outlet for its sale. It's the only disease that brings the revenue to several governments of the world, including the Western government. It's the only disease that is advertised in the television, on the satellite, on the radio, in the newspapers, in the magazines. It is the only disease which brings violent deaths on the highways. It is the only disease that destroys families. It is the only disease which has got no viral or germ cause. It's not a disease. The Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 790, It's not a disease, it's a Satan's handiwork. Abstain from this handiwork that you may prosper. And Islam also has a solution. There are chances that you may get allured by these problems which the West has, which the world has. So Islam has a solution how to stay away from this problem. That is Salah. Salah doesn't only mean prayer. No, to pray means to ask for help, to beseech. In Salah, besides asking for help, we also seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance and we also praise Him. Therefore, I prefer calling Salah as a sort of programming, sort of conditioning. Because in the Salah, we are conditioned, we are programmed. But if someone says, where are you going? And if you say, I'm going for programming or brainwashing, it will sound odd. Therefore, people say prayer for Salah, I've got no objection. But that doesn't denote the complete meaning of Salah. Because in Salah, we are being reminded. When the Imam recites certain verses, after Surah Fatiha, he may recite Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 188, that do not use your wealth as bait for judges. That means do not bribe. He may recite Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 90, that intoxicants and gambling is the Satan's handiwork. We are being programmed again and again. Because the world allows you so much, there are chances that we can get deprogrammed. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us a solution that how to keep us reprogrammed. The sort of conditioning. Today, the Western world, they're afraid of only one thing. The maximum that the Western world today is afraid of is of Islam. By Western world, I mean the leaders of the Western world. They are afraid of Islam. They are afraid. You know why? Because the amount of enjoyment that they're taking is because of all the evil that is in society. Western world is afraid that if all these evils stop, if Islam becomes prevalent, all these evils will stop. Alcohol will stop, dancing will stop, and quoting will stop, raping will stop, and who will fill the coffers? So the leaders of the Western world, most of them, they are afraid of Islam. That's the reason the media regularly is pumping information against Islam. On the television, if you hear, on the radio, in the magazines, in the newspaper, all the information is against Islam, is maligning Islam. If you hear any bomb blast that takes place, it has to be a Muslim. These Muslims, they are fundamentalists and terrorists. Even the Oklahoma bombing, the headline was Middle East conspiracy. After some time when they come to know, it was an American soldier. But that comes inside in the page, doesn't come on the headlines. Muslims are fundamentalists come on the headlines, and the real reason comes inside. And you have certain times, even in some countries, that, 